Hey everybody. As you know, I'm a pretty big fan of looking at real data from publicly available websites that anybody can go find to help evaluate risk and understand the geologic context of different problems. So this week we're working on sea level rise and you hear people talking a lot about global sea level rise. And what I'm going to be asking you to do in this assignment is look at sea level rise at several different locations around the world. Um, each of you is only going to have to look at one location, but I'm grouping you up so that you can see a variety of data from a bunch of different locations. And one thing that's going to be really important is thinking about what the difference is between global sea level rise and the type of um, change that's being experienced at, you know, at any one area. So there are lots of different ways of getting sea level data depending on the time frame that you're interested in. What we're going to be doing today is using this permanent service for mean sea level, which uses tide gauge data. And these are instruments that are at the coast that monitor changes in sea level and in most cases have been doing so for a couple of decades. So I'm going to go ahead and run an example on how to download data. Um, and I'm going to do it for Boston, Massachusetts. I'm going to say a little bit more about the, the science and sort of the context of this problem in a separate video. So this is going to be just a methods video. OK, so I'm interested in looking for Boston, Mass. And um, like you guys, uh, when you look down here, you're going to see that there's a station name as well as an ID. It's actually easier to look using the ID numbers and you can click on the little arrow here and it will put them in numerical order, which is not how they appear in the default. I happen to know that Boston is 235. So I'm going to scroll down here until we can see here's Boston and it's at station 235. The only part of this row that's actually a live link is the ID number. So when you click on that, it's bringing us to the station page for Boston. And each station page includes, you know, a map that shows you where the gauge is located. So here it's, you know, right near downtown Boston. And then we can scroll down a little bit and we see a chart that shows monthly sea level data from 1921 up through last year, which is pretty amazing that we have such long records. Um, and you're wondering to yourself, why is our homework to make a chart if there's already a chart on the page? But what you can't get easily from this chart is the rate of change. So we can see that sea level is rising in Boston, but we can't tell exactly how fast. And we want to be able to actually get a number that we can compare to other locations. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and download the monthly data. So when you click on that, it brings up this new page and you can see that there are years. Um, these are decimal years, so 1921 first month and there's a water level. And then these are some other columns in case there are error codes or anything. We're not going to worry about those today. So all I'm going to do is select all, copy. I'm going to bring this over into a new Google Sheet and paste it. And what you notice is when I paste this in, even though it was originally four columns, now they're all in one column. So we're going to separate those. We're going to go over to data and we're going to find split text columns. And when we do that, this little box appears here and it wants to know how to separate the columns. So we're going to tell it to actually choose the semicolon because you can see that's separating each number. And when we do that, Et voila, it is magically split. OK, so let's throw up a real quick chart here and just see what we've got. Um, even though we know we think we know what the chart should look like, let's check this one. So we're going to select the time, the year, and the water level. And we'll go up to Insert, Chart. And hey, that chart looks nothing like the chart on the web page. It looks like a flat line, and then it's got these weird things that go to really, really low water levels. OK, so those aren't real. What they do is that when data aren't available for the station, they actually use the value minus 99999. 
to show that there are no data available. So um, since those aren't real water levels, we're going to go ahead and take those out. So I'm just going to click off and leave the chart over here. We're going to go into column B, and there's actually a function where we can find and replace those minus 9999 placeholder values. So we're going to, in the find column, we're going to put in minus 99999. That's what we're looking for. And we're going to replace it with absolutely nothing. Do not put anything in this box. Just leave it blank. Um, and what we're going to do is, let me move this over here so we can see it. We're going to say replace all. And you can see that as soon as we do that, it tells us there were 11 instances of the default value. And they're gone. And you can see that the chart itself has changed. So we're all done. Now that those values are out of there, now we have something that looks a little bit more familiar. So we can go in and start to do things um, like we can add a trend line. And you've done this before in the sea ice exercise, but we'll go ahead and look at it again. So we're going to add a trend line. And we're interested in the actual rate of change. So we're going to put in the equation. And what's really interesting about this equation is when you look at this, this value up here, this 2.84, that's the number we're interested in. That's the rate of change for that trend line. So it's telling us um, that sea level at Boston is going up 2.84 eight millimeters a year or 2.84 millimeters a year. Um, so this is our actual rate of change and that's what you want to find. There are a few other things that you can do to sort of improve the formatting in here. The only other thing I would really suggest is obviously add a title um, and also I would go ahead and change the vertical axis or the y-axis because you can see all of our data are between 6,000 and 8,000. So instead of having it start at zero, I'm going to make the minimum value 6,000. Yeah, that looks that looks a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit easier to see that it's increasing and now we can see the trend line running through there. Okay, so once you have your chart done and properly labeled and everything's plot it up, um, you're going to go ahead and share that with the other people in your group. And then you're going to be using the charts that everybody generates for a variety of locations to answer the questions in the assignment. Good luck.